In this video we continue our look at Adobe Camera Raw but we're going to make a monochrome or a black and white image. It makes perfect sense to me to create my monochrome images via Adobe Camera Raw simply because I want to have the flexibility of the raw image to allow me to create the contrast and impact that the monochrome requires. In the past we may have created them from within Photoshop from an already created colour image. In some cases a black and white conversion may come as an afterthought perhaps driven by camera clubs and set subjects like monochrome and black and white. My experience of this subject over quite a number of years tells me that most people fulfil this subject by simply removing the colour from a colour image. Now sometimes that will work, sometimes it won't, but I think in most cases if you want the very best results then we need to work our image through camera raw with the intention of making a black and white or a monochrome from the start. So for quite some time now I have chosen Adobe Camera Raw and the decision right at the start to create the monochrome from scratch using global editing, strategic editing and then finishing touches. With the image I have on screen my decision to go to a monochrome is due to the fact that it doesn't have a great deal of colour to start with and my view is it may just as well be discarded. Whenever we manipulate an image towards black and white or monochrome what we're actually doing is removing data from the image. It's colour data that we're removing of course but in effect that simplifies the image and when we choose the right image for the technique it's a very positive thing. And when we look at the subject it's a castle. It's powerful, historic, so a black and white isn't going to hurt the subject matter either. The techniques we're going to use here are really no different to those we've used before. But I'm going to speed up this demonstration so that we don't duplicate what we've already done in the previous videos but also to allow more time to concentrate on what I think is going to be the troublesome part of this manipulation and that's the tree line right at the top against the sky. Now you can see up here on the right hand side I've got my snapshots open and that's going to enable me to bring you up to speed and move this video along quite quickly. Here we're looking at the original image. I'm going to jump to stage 2 here. I'll tell you what I've done here. I've done the lens corrections, colour aberration, even though I've made it a black and white. That's just part of my routine. But I've also used the guided transform tool just to straighten up the building a little bit. If we move on to stage 3 you can see quite a bit of difference there. I've included exposure, clarity, dehaze and blacks to give that punch an impact I'm looking for. Now moving on to stage 4 you can see I put a graduated filter over the top of this image and I also did the spotting in the sky but when I got to this point and I saw the way my graduated filter was darkening the top of the image it's a dead giveaway that the work done here is not that subtle that I decided to use a smart object and make two different versions of this particular image. Now I've already got my smart object status turned on but just in case you haven't just a reminder from a previous video if we go down to the bottom center of the screen there's a hyperlink inside the hyperlink this is the option we're looking for it's one of those that once we tick it will remain ticked until we decide to change it. So what I need to do here is to remove that graduated filter. So I need to go back to my basic tab, to my graduated filters, click to liven that up and I'm going to delete it. So you can see the position I'm starting from. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to open this up as a smart object into Photoshop. So here we have the image open in Photoshop. 
One thing I neglected to say, I did add just a little bit of noise reduction in this, about 20 value on the luminance, not much. But here we can see we've got a smart object, so I'm going to put my cursor just to the right, right click and choose new smart object via a copy. And what I need to do from either one or the other is to open one of these back into Adobe Camera Raw. I'll take the bottom one this time and we'll open it up. Now instead of putting a graduated filter on here, because I'm going to be doing my strategic editing in Photoshop in layers, what I can do here is just apply a change to the sky and ignore what it's going to do to the bottom two thirds of the image. So I want less exposure. I want to take down probably some of the highlights. I certainly want a healthy slug of dehaze, blacks. You can see I'm looking to put a fair amount of power into the sky, but a contrast will take the exposure down. We're going to keep this as a smart object for as long as we can because it's this area here that's going to be the most difficult. So maybe I've gone a little bit too dark there. Let me just raise that up a little bit. And I will use a graduated filter just at the top of the sky because I don't want it to go down over this part here. So let me just select that, drag it down from the top. That's far too dark, but no problem. We can click inside the overlay and reset that. Touch the V key to hide the overlay. So I could just drop the exposure down in that top section. We're never entirely sure how far we need to go. So I think from here, we need to open this up, apply a layer mask, blend the sky with the other layer and see where we are. Well, there you can see the layer that I've just manipulated because I've turned off the one above. But if I turn that back on, what I need to do now is to make the top part of this layer transparent so that the sky from this layer shows through. So we need a layer mask. This time we don't need the layer mask in black, we need the mask in white. So we just go down to the bottom left, click to create the mask. But then we need to go over to the bottom of the toolbox on the left hand side. We need black as our foreground colour. But we've been here before, we need to go to our gradient tool and from the options at the top of the screen, exactly the same as the ones we used before. Linear gradient and from this drop down window, foreground to transparent. What we need to do now is draw a line. And if you can see my cursor in the center of the frame up at the top there, I'll hold my shift key. I'll just drag the line down. And there we get the first view of the picture we've created. If I hold down my shift key and I click the mask, I can temporarily turn it off. So you can see how my gradient is coming down over the trees and to some degree the top of the building. So what I want to do there is to temper that a little bit so it's not quite as obvious along the tree line here, it's where it's at its worst. Now what many people do when they're trying to do this work is they enlarge the image, they get a very small brush, or they make a selection and they try to go along the edge of the tree line. Now I'm going to suggest that's the wrong approach. Let's just think about what we've got to do here. We've just brought black down from the top in a graduated fashion. So to repair the damage it's done here, we need to spray white. So if we go down to the toolbox and we select white, if we then pick up a brush, and I'm using a standard basic brush, if we go to the options at the top of the screen, we are going to leave the opacity at 100%, but I'm going to drop the flow rate down to probably 1 or 2%. I'm going to start at 1%. Now you can see the size of the brush that I've got, and I'm going to make it bigger, because I want my brush to span that area. And what I've got to do is mask that area until it starts to look more natural. Now this can be quite slow and delicate work, but we'll start.
just keeping it steady you can drop the brush down when you're working down below the tree line push the brush up a little bit but we can just allow that little bit of graduation along this area here and it's beginning to look pretty good in fact I may just raise up a little bit just to blend it a bit more but I'm reasonably happy with what I've done now the thing is we can check what we've done here because we can hold the shift key we can click the mask and turn it off and on and off and on and we can look at that tree line as we do this and we can see if we've got enough work done in the areas right along the edge and if I was being super super critical I may say well I could do a little bit, bit more right at the top there and maybe just along that area but other than that I've got a pretty nice blend you'll notice that as I turn the mask on and off the tree line at the top left is a little bit darker it's obviously a different type of leaf on these trees and they have recorded slightly darker but that does mean that I feel that this area here and maybe down at the bottom right corner is a little pale because I'm going for impact here but that is the beauty of working with smart objects because I can select that smart object double click and we're straight back into Adobe Camera Raw now I can either use things like my adjustment brush to darken this down or I do have the other option and maybe that may be a better option let me cancel that maybe it's a better option to create yet another smart object layer given that we're working in this way in Photoshop's layers so I'm going to go to the right of the thumbnail right click and make yet a new smart object via copy I'll get rid of that mask because we don't need it I'll drop it in the bin we do need to open this up into camera raw now we don't need the adjustment brush I just want to drop down the exposure in that area maybe I can even push up the contrast a little bit that doesn't look too bad I'll click OK to that now remember what we have to do once this is complete I'm going to hold my alt key and create the mask the mask will be created in black now we can select white again a soft edge brush again we're going to keep the flow rate very very low and now we can decide that's a little bit too low I'll go to 2% there you can see how I can delicately reduce the tones in that area I think I'll go a little further I'll go to 5% always best to start off low and then let's go over to the right and we can do the same sort of work over there now once we're doing this work of course it could be that we didn't actually make it dark enough well we do have the opportunity if we want to take the image back into Adobe Camera Raw but I think it's looking okay and I'm almost certain to want to do a little bit of dodge and burn in Photoshop a little bit later on so maybe we'll pick up that sort of thing then so I think this is the time when if we're going to have a timeout this is when we need it we need to save the image maybe walk away come back later if you've got the patience to do that so I've got my project saved I've got all three of those layers saved just as you can see them there but I'm going to move on now so I'm going to go down and flatten the image because we need to do a little bit of spotting work here if we zoom in down at the bottom left we can see two people there which are a little distracting so I'm going to pick up my spot healing brush and I think we can just click over those and they'll be gone now I'm going to look around the image for areas which I think are a little bit distracting and sometimes I find the best way to do this is to hit control zero look around to see what draws my eye then zoom in and deal with it well there's a light area there which seems to draw me I'm not sure what it is some little plate in the wall or door in the wall control zero again you can see what I'm doing I'm not too keen on this pipe work here it looks a little bit ugly so I'll just do a little bit of building work here 
and as you can see this is dead easy stuff there's no skill required here Photoshop gives us all of the options within the healing brush so we need to look around at other areas there's a little bit down at the bottom left right in the bottom there there's a bit of whiteness from the bush so I'll get rid of that and that a little bit down the right corner as well I may darken that down even more over in the middle right well you can see the sort of things that I deal with a lot of people wouldn't bother would they I find my eye drawn to a white area on the roof up here and when you zoom in well what it is becomes pretty obvious but it is rather blatant and white so I'm going to remove that too just paint over that and let Photoshop do its magic the next thing I'd like to do is a little vignetting so I'm going to go over to the toolbox and pick up my lasso tool I'm going to draw a freehand lasso shape around the image something along those lines we can click inside and move it into the center I need to select the outer edge so we need to go to select inverse then select and mask we need to feather the edge quite considerably I'll over type the value to about 450 pixels and click OK I'll hide it with control H so it's just out of our eye line but still working then via control L or image adjustment levels just going to do my usual little tweak around the outer edges just a little bit just to hold us into the picture that'll do nicely not forgetting of course we've got a selection in place so we need to hit control H to reveal it but better still control D to delete it I'd like to do a little bit of dodge and burning so I'm going to pick up from the toolbox my burn tool again a basic soft edge brush using this for 99 percent of the work that I do in Photoshop I'm going to select probably shadows I'll push the exposure to 10 percent go down to the bottom right Whoa, that's a little bit heavy control Z remove that if it runs away with you that's what I mean about keeping this a bit too low so I got a little too ambitious there I'm going to drop that down to five temper the brush and I'll be a little more careful but that's what I wanted to do just darken those areas maybe the sky just a touch not much but then I want to select my dodge tool and the pathway around the castle I would say is mid-tone so let's select that the exposure there is 50% that's way too high so I'll click the little icon there drop that to 10% I think we'll be okay there need to zoom in a little bit and there you can see we can just lift that a little I'll make the brush a bit smaller in effect we're taking a walk around the edge of the castle and of course you could choose to use this method to do any little bits of darkening or lightening around the castle that you feel you need to adjust because a lot of this is a little more personal for example we've got um, some quite bright areas up at the top of the castle so it's possible you could select your burn tool and switch to white or highlights zoom in a little bit drop the brush down but just you can see what I've done I'm just killing the real bright areas there but I'm not going too far everything is subtle and measured now you may be surprised that your image has suddenly disappeared and we have reappeared on a website some time ago over the last year or so there's been a selection of filters that we can apply to our images that work particularly well with black and white they were called Nick filters 
They were offered free for a while, but now we do have to purchase them from DxO. But I must admit, over the last few years, I've become quite a fan of these particular filters, particularly in my infrared monochrome photography. So what I tend to do with any filters is to first get my image to a point where I'm happy with it. So if the filters don't add anything at all, I'm quite happy with the image I've created. But it doesn't hurt, does it, to just look and see if the NIC filters can take this just a small step further. And generally, it can. So let's give it a try. I've got the free version here because I've had it some time. So some of these names may have changed, but the ones we're looking for is the Silver FX Pro 2. When they appear, we've got a number of presets on the left-hand side. We can see them in categories, as you can see up at the top left, and we've got more changes on the right than we can shake a stick at. But I'm going to keep things really simple because I found that just a little way down from the top, there's two options that generally do pretty well. This one here is called High Structure Harsh. This one is called High Structure Smooth. Now if I select that and go up to the top, I can just click and you can compare. Look what it's doing to the sky. It's just giving that sky that little extra impact, isn't it? A tiny bit more contrast. It's certainly working in the image's favour. I hope you agree with that because what I'm going to do is click OK to accept that. I'll let it run in real time. It doesn't take too long. And the real good thing about these filters, the filters are not applied to our background layer. It actually creates another layer for us. So look, I've got the best of both worlds. I've got my filtered version as a layer and I've got my original sitting beneath. I've just touched the F key a couple of times from within Photoshop to show the image full screen like this because we'll take a look at what we've completed here and then the image we started with. So when you jump back and look at the original image you can see straight away I think that the colour is not going to help the image very much. It certainly needs a massive injection of contrast so a monochrome conversion seems the logical approach. And of course from this point we do have the opportunity to try out different toning. I've looked at this with a pale blue colour and it actually works quite well but of course many people would naturally turn to a sepia tone given the historic nature. I often say that when we look at our original raw files, perhaps in Adobe Bridge, not quite as big as this, we have to teach ourselves to look past what we're seeing here and see the potential. Here you can see what I mean about the blue tone. Or perhaps the sepia. 